Asalaamu Alaikum Jay. Thank you so much for joining us. My first question, I'm just going to get stuck in. Sure. Let's start from the beginning. So you had a bad perception of Islam to start off with. Then you've been researching it for a few years and then you did your Shahada. Tell us all about that journey. Sure. Firstly, Walaikum Salaam. I'm so honored to be here speaking to you. Um, it's been a very long journey. Uh, it's been about five years. I grew up in the UK where I've had a very, very negative perception about Islam throughout my entire life. Many situations growing up um, made me have those feelings. And five years ago, I really began learning about Islam from firstly going to university. I think it's actually about eight years ago now I first went to university. Since I was about 18, I was learning a lot about Islam. And finally, Alhamdulillah, I took my Shahada in Istanbul in the Suleimani Mosque in August 2020. And we, we were just talking earlier on that, because I wanted to find out if there was a turning point. Mm -hmm. But like you said, there wasn't really one because it's, it's more like a gradual process. Yeah, it's been, it's been a many, many years, like I said, about eight years now. I originally thought it was five, but really eight years, where I have been introduced to this incredible world we live in. I've met so many people around the world. And finally, yeah, after I went to Istanbul in May or June 2020, I took my Shahada. But it wasn't just one decision. After reading the Quran many times as well during lockdown of 2020, um, yeah, it's not been just one year or two years or a specific moment. It's been a very, a very long journey. And Alhamdulillah, I'm here now. I'm very grateful. And was there a transition, do you think, like from J then to J now? I wouldn't say that much. For me, I've always been this person. Um, I definitely in my heart have always been Muslim. It just took me a, a little bit more time to get to that point. Um, but Alhamdulillah, I'm here now. Um, yeah, I'm very happy. There are so many stories of people converting mm -hmm. and, and then they, they find challenges. And one of them, it's how they get accepted by the people around them. Yes. In your experience, what was it like? Uh, so amazing. I'm very, very lucky to have had the experience I've had. When I told my mom and my family they were so supportive. When I told my friends, they're so supportive and they're still with me to this day. I'm so grateful. And even when I tell people now that I'm Muslim, they are still a bit shocked um, because uh, I don't fit the stereotypical view of a Muslim. But um, everyone around me has been so, so supportive and I'm so grateful and so happy and blessed to have what I have. I'm very lucky. Did you have any, some kind of like, pre-jitters almost? Like, you know, right, I'm going to tell my mom or I'm going to tell my friends, and all of that kind of thing. Did you feel like so nervous or were you like, no, I, I, I know I've got this? So with my mum, I was very nervous to tell her. I don't know why, because I, I always knew she would be supportive. She's supported me for everything I'm doing, everything I've done. Um, she's always been behind me. Um, all my friends, very. I wasn't scared. I knew they would support me. I have the best friends and I'm so lucky. But yeah, my mom, I was very scared to tell her, but Alhamdulillah, she was amazing. That's fantastic to hear. And and so so you've, you've gone into this journey. Were there challenges for you still, even though you've had a, like, a, like a good reception mm -hmm. for, for becoming Muslim? Did you face any challenges at all? I think the biggest challenge I've had is halal meat. Mm -hmm. It might sound obvious, but it's very, very difficult. Especially in London, you have a lot more options, but back at home in my hometown, there are very limited options. Mm. Um, even so going to university, there was obviously a lot of partying, a lot of going out. And that's how, how I find, especially people in the UK, that's how they socialize. They go to a pub or they go to a bar, they chat after work. And obviously I can't do that. So there it is a long le learning process where you have to find things that don't fit that. And instead you're going to say the cinema or you're going to parks with, or walks with your friends, which still is so fulfilling. But um, that was the biggest barrier I definitely think is even trying to convince my friends to do things that don't involve drinking, especially in the UK. Uh, it was harder, but I found the balance. It's good. We've got brothers and sisters who are new to Islam. Yes. What would your advice be, your tips? Because obviously they're all still finding their way. What are the best ways to kind of like really kind of like, you know, maintain it? I highly recommend reverts to always have a good supportive community around you um, because 
especially if your family didn't accept you or your friends didn't accept you, even if they did, you're still moving away from a life you once had. And that support is so crucial to keep you on the path, alhamdulillah. It's been an amazing journey for me and I recommend everyone just to stick with it, keep learning about the beautiful religion and yeah, you won't regret it. It's the best decision of my life. What did you do to learn? Did you surround yourself? Because you, you travel, so you, yes. you've been able to discover a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what did you do? Like, you know, as soon as you've done your Shahada, mm -hmm. what's your journey like being a Muslim? My journey has been phenomenal. I can't quite believe what I've done in the past two years. It's been amazing. The best learning things for me are meeting people. I've had the honor of visiting uh, so many Muslim majority countries around the world from Iraq, uh, Egypt, Turkey, all the way to Indonesia, uh, which I've just visited. And that has been the best for me in this journey is meeting those people, having in-depth conversations, going to beautiful mosques and shrines. And it's, yeah, that's the best way for me. It's been phenomenal. Let's go through some of your firsts as a Muslim. Yes. So first Ramadan, what was that like for you? Yes, so my first Ramadan actually was back in 2019. Um, okay. Alhamdulillah, this was my th third Ramadan. Um, as I said, I've been learning about Islam and taking part in uh, uh, Islamic uh, traditions, I would say, uh, rituals for a long time. And 2019, I took part in my first Ramadan because I wanted to not only experience it, but understand uh, what Ramadan is all about. And so that was my first Ramadan. Then I did my second Ramadan and then I, Alhamdulillah, took my Shahada. So, yeah, it's been incredible. You were a pro by then. Yes, always a pro. <laughs> <laughs> and the fasting and everything. How how did you how did you do it? Like I suppose you've been trying it, obviously. Um, but how was that for you? Uh, twenty nineteen was hard, um, especially because it was just me doing it. Um, now, alhamdulillah, I, when I do Ramadan, I'm surrounded by people who are also taking part in the same thing, so it's easier for me, and we kind of all support each other. Um, 2019 was difficult, but also I have a very strong mindset. If I want to achieve something, I will, I will do it. Um, so, as alhamdulillah, as it's got uh, further into my journey, Ramadan is a lot easier, and I'm very grateful and thankful to be able to take part in it. Mm. It's important. Yeah. Do you still remember the first time you ever prayed? Yes. Oh wow, that was a long time ago. Um, I think the first time I prayed was back in 2017 or 18. Wow. Just after I left university. I was trying to learn it. And, and how was that like for you? Because obviously it's, it's different. Like, because you went to a C of E school. Yes. It, it's 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 different way of, of praying. It's, mm -hmm. it's more like class pans and, yes. and that kind of thing to actually, you know, doing all of the different mm -hmm. movements. How was that for you? Like, you know, what was going through your head when you were trying to learn it and going through the mm -hmm. motions? Honestly, very confused. Uh, there's a lot to it and not only the um, the physical movements, it's also remembering the Arabic. Mm -hmm. That has taken me a long time to even get to. Um, I wouldn't say we necessarily prayed in my Church of England school growing up. It was more like a, every Friday was, we would sing hymns and all kind of come together every hour to do those hymns. Going to your first um, like Umrah, and actually going to Saudi, mm -hmm. how was that for you? Saudi is a phenomenal country and I'm so blessed just this year to have gone twice. Inshallah next year I will do, I will go to Mecca. I really hope I will be able to inshallah. But I went to Medina, Riyadh and Jeddah and I love it. It's such a blessed country, it's such a peaceful country and yeah, one day I hope to go back. Do you still remember the first dua that you made? No, no. <laughs> it was a long time ago and I've made many since then. Now you're working on a very exciting project, yes. Muhammad The Last Hope. Yes. Tell us all about that. Yes, so this is Muhammad The Last Hope. It's an extremely exciting brand new docu-film, which is going to be hopefully coming out inshallah this year. It is a project to highlight the positivity about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it's a project which we interview 100 converts from over 40 countries. It's a really exciting project to get away from the negative perception about Islam and show the truth, show the positivity and the hope, um, not only in Islam, but through the Prophet, Alhamdulillah. And it's a very exciting project. And yeah, I can't wait for people to see it.
tell us like how long it's going to take for this mm -hmm. project to finish. So we're actually still fundraising for this project. It's an enormous, ambitious project. So we're hoping to raise a lot of money for it. It's going to take a lot of work. But hopefully, inshallah, it'll be finished towards the end of this year. Oh, wow. uh, we still have a few people to interview. Um, incredible, exciting stories, which I can't wait for people to see. It's a very ambitious project, but um, inshallah, we'll do it. And that's converts from around the world. From all around the world, from over 40 countries. Wow. 40 countries, so um, like one fifth of the world. Wow, it's so very you, exciting. you'll be traveling more than usual. So that's a perfect segue because I really would love to talk to you about your traveling. Mm -hmm. You've been everywhere. Tell us all about that. Yeah, so I started traveling full time two years ago. Um, it's been an incredible journey. To I travel to mostly Muslim majority countries. Um, and the reason behind that is I run my YouTube channel and I want to show them in a positive light, you know, especially media in the UK. You don't see a lot of positive messages about Islam and Muslims themselves. And it's so important for me to um, show that what life is really like on the ground, especially in countries like Iraq, in Iran, uh, Saudi. People think Saudi is a very closed off country where um, women are persecuted, but actually in reality, it's quite the opposite. And yeah, I go around the, uh, around the world to not only show the good side, but also inspire people to break out of their own country, break out of their hometown and go and explore the world, uh, the beautiful world, the way it is and come to their own conclusions and meet the incredible Muslims and people around the world because this world is amazing and they just need to take that first step um, to see it. MashaAllah, and you, you are, you're doing so well on YouTube. Congratulations. You. Do you feel pressure to kind of like represent because you, you've got a good microphone there, like a good platform there to really give Muslims and Islamic countries mm -hmm. uh, like, like good rep. I don't feel the pressure because I only tell the truth on my channel. Um, there's no pre-scripture mostly. It's really just me going out into those countries, especially Iraq. You go into these huge, incredible markets. Those are real people. Those are real interactions. And that's real life. I, I don't feel pressure because... Yes, from filming myself, I do, I do jumble up my words sometimes and I feel the pressure for that. But in terms of real life situations where I'm meeting people, there's no, I'm not scared because, or I don't feel like I have pressure because that's real. I'm not, there's no covering up anything, no me twisting words or anything. It's really, that is real life. And that is what I want people to see, to realize that these countries are safe. These people are amazing. The food is incredible and delicious and the culture should be celebrated. From your travels so far, are there certain things that really stick? Like, you know, they, they, they're there and you will, you know, you constantly get flashbacks like, my God, this is so wonderful. I wish I was there now. Uh, two of the biggest things are, number one, the beautiful mosques I get to see. One of my favorites is actually in Peshawar in Pakistan. It's beautiful. I could spend weeks and weeks and weeks just in that one spot. And secondly, the taste of the food. Uh, for me, Iraqi food and Pakistani food is my favorite, also Turkish. Um, I can still, I can taste some foods on my mouth as I'm <laughs> talking about this. Also the people, of course, uh, but definitely top two are the food and the mosques. And the mosques. And, um, and Istanbul holds a very special place in yes. your heart. And, uh, and we were just earlier again talking about the Adhan. Mm -hmm. When you hear the Adhan, what goes through your head or what do you feel? Uh, the most amount of peace I could ever experience. For me, it's, it's grounding. It, no matter what you're experiencing throughout the day or the pressures of society, when I hear that, I really, I'm just calm and I'm peaceful. And then you pray and everything feels perfect and amazing. Yeah. Do you have a bucket list? And if yes, what's in it? Oof, many things. <laughs> Number one, Mecca. And I really want to experience the cultures in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, I travel to countries, obviously, that don't have the best media representation. And Afghanistan right now, especially, uh, we're coming up to one year since the Taliban. Mm -hmm. uh, we took over the country. And for me, I want to go there myself and experience what life is really like on the ground, away from the media and, of course, taste of food. Afghan food is phenomenal. I've only had the pleasure of eating it in Pakistan, but 
yeah, hopefully I get to go one day, inshallah, to Afghanistan and taste the food. Nice, authentic. Yes, good, yes. authentic food That's on it. the ground in Afghanistan. Well, we can't wait to see the videos of your adventures. And um, so here in the UK, um, do you think it's harder to practice Islam? Do you think, um, like having seen or been to other places, mm -hmm. um, is it harder or do you think actually we're doing quite well here in terms of being able to practice our religion? I think in London and other cities around the world, uh, around the country like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool as well also is good. Um, but away from those uh, hot spots of the country it is very, very difficult. Um, back in my hometown, there's I think one mosque in Exeter where I grew up, but where I went to university, there's not one um, for many, many miles. Um, but in terms of the bigger cities, yes, definitely. I think before I left London two years ago, I didn't have the best understanding of where to pray. I didn't, I didn't revert to Islam until after I left. Now I'm back now. Um, actually, only the third time since I left. It's oh. good to be back. <laughs> um, I'm appreciating what we have in the city. It's really amazing. The places that you've been to, obviously some are places that have bad rep, right? Yes. Um, and, and when you hear these things and then you see how beautiful the place is, um, is that what keeps you motivated to keep showing them in, yeah. a, in a better light? Yes. Um, the reason I do my YouTube channel and make videos and take photographs of these incredible people is because I just want people to be celebrated for their culture, no matter where you come from in the world. And seeing the media and seeing what they show about these countries when I've had completely different experiences and I've had the most, I'm gonna cry. I've had the, like the best interactions with these people and seeing them get these bad representations, it really breaks my heart because these people are the best you can find in the world. The hospitality is phenomenal. And I think people in these countries, especially in the, some people in the UK and some people were saying the United States, they could really learn a lot from these people in terms of being a good human being, reaching out to people who may need it and being there for each other because we're all here as one in this world. And I think a lot of people need to learn from that. If you could stay in one country out of all the places that you've seen, where would it be and why? That is possibly the hardest question you could ask me. <laughs> um, there are so many places around the world I would love to live from the beautiful mountains in Pakistan to the cultural hub of Lahore. Lahore is an incredible city to Baghdad in Iraq. Iraq holds some of the best history you could ever find in the world. And many people don't understand that. Many people don't know that. Um, but for me, Istanbul. Istanbul will always hold my heart for many reasons, as well as my Shahada. Um, it's, a, it's a city with an explosion of culture, with incredible food. Alhamdulillah, I have so many friends there now, which I'm so grateful to have. And for me, uh, it's one of the best cities in the world and somewhere I feel so comfortable with, um, I can speak some of the language, I can have those conversations and yeah, it's for me one of the best places in the world. The travels, the traveling helps you discover obviously the world cultures, but it also, I suppose, teaches us about like Allah's creations and, and all of those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Will you share with us some of the things that you've learned during your travels? Yes, wow. I have been through a personal journey in the past two years since I started traveling. Um, I think the biggest thing within me that has changed is I'm so much more, um, I have so much more empathy within me. Um, I, I'm not saying I'm a bad person before or not, um, I didn't have empathy before, but really I have grown to learn so much more that um, strangers are just friends you've never met. And everyone in this world is equal and we're all equal together, no matter where you come from, your society, your culture or anything else in between. Um, yeah, that's definitely the biggest thing I've learned is all the same. Was there anything about like, say, your temper or anything like that, that you feel that I, there's no point getting angry anymore because yeah. I've, I've seen so many things, you know, like all, all of those things that we kind of like just don't even think that we're doing mm -hmm. um, that, that's changed in me. So I was never an angry person, really. Um, obviously, you get frustrated. Um, for me, the biggest thing is when I'm traveling, a lot of things go wrong, uh, whether you miss a flight or there's traffic and you miss something or something doesn't quite go right. And 
those things when I first started traveling would really annoy me. And now I don't get annoyed really by anything. Um, I believe in Allah's plan. I believe that everything set out in front of me is a plan and everything is supposed to happen the way it's supposed to happen because of Allah. And now I, I think I'm the most peaceful I've ever felt. And if something happens, it happens. And if I wanted to go in a direction that didn't happen, I've been taken another way. This was not the right plan for me. And yeah, before I would say I would get frustrated, I would, don't get angry. And now, now I don't. It's good. Calm. Very calm. calm. Very calm yes. and collected. What else have you got in mind apart from the travels, mm -hmm. projects or anything like that? Or any aspirations mm -hmm. that you've got in mind? Away from the projects? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's a big one. I guess, honestly, to go to Mecca, mm -hmm. away from cameras, away from filming, I would love to just do that for myself and go there. Uh, yeah, I, that's the biggest thing for, for sure. Other than that, I have so many projects that I want to that I want to do, um, and hopefully, inshallah, one day I do them all. Going back to um, an earlier question about tips for brothers and sisters who mm -hmm. are new to Islam, what about brothers and sisters that are born? It, born Muslims, mm -hmm. but are having doubts maybe and, and they want to leave Islam. Mm -hmm. What would your advice be? Always reach out to me, number one. Uh, for sure, I'm always there for anyone who needs it, who needs guidance. And also there's so many things out there, so many resources that they can use for that. Um, Islam for me has been life-changing and it's been the best decision I could ever make. I think when people are born into something and they are influenced by things outside of the religion, whether that be haram things or anything else in between. Um, I think it's important to stay on your track, stay within this, uh, because this is the best life for you, in my opinion. This is the best. It will guide you to be the best. And Allah's plan is always the best for those people. So, yeah, stick with it. How do you balance like your deen and dunya? Because mm -hmm. you are presented with some amazing things. Like mm -hmm. in this world, it's beautiful. And, you know, you've got like goals, right? Hashtag goals and stuff like that. How do you balance that? It's still something I'm really working on, especially being in the travel industry. Uh, I'm so grateful to travel around the world, but I don't have routine. And it's very, very hard for me to make a routine when you're in four or five different countries every single month. Um, hopefully one day in the future, inshallah, I hope to have that routine. I hope to be moving to Istanbul next month, inshallah. inshallah to hopefully find that balance and uh, regain control of that. I'm so blessed to have the work I have, but also I need to prioritize some things. So. Is there anything you would like to say further to the people that are watching? Number one, thank you so much for the support. Um, it's been the most phenomenal two years and I hope to continue, inshallah. Um, and number two, um, I want to say thank you to Allah. <laughs> for giving me what he has and for showing me the right path. And I'm just very grateful to every, everything that's happening in my life. I'm so, so grateful. Jay, brother, thank you so much for your time and we look forward to seeing more of your adventures. Thank you for having me, it's an honor. <laughs>